Well, earlier today, uh, both the S&P 500 and NASDAQ Composite, uh, they sold off um, with some uh, aggression, and uh, then they bounced off of their respective 20-day uh, exponential moving averages. Um, you can see that uh, they continued their bounce. Um, I would be watching for potential undercut and rally patterns. Uh, um, it's nice to see that, uh, well, I don't know if it's nice to see it, but it's expected to see that uh, this QE phenomenon continues. Uh, and uh, you'll, you'll note that every time any sort of forceful selling has occurred this year, markets find their footing in a rapid fashion. And so a meaningful correction just can't seem to occur. Um, if uh, for all you market historians out there, if you look at the S&P and the NASDAQ going way, way back, you know, decades worth of market data, you'll see that, uh, well, this year the market uh, NASDAQ composite has corrected a sum total of 2.4%. That's its worst correction this year. Uh, the S&P, I think, is about equivalent, at like 3%. Um, and so you all might remember that uh, there, there's a report we sent out that 2016 was one of the S&P's shallowest, dullest periods on record. Uh, that was during the second half of 2016. But 2017 claims the all-time record. Um, we, we know this uh, just from the, uh, the shallowness of the drawdowns in the major averages. Uh, also, volatility is trading at record low ranges uh, with a VIX between 10 and 11. Um, and, you know, QE has been a formidable force as major central banks continue to aggressively print money. Um, and we detailed that uh, in uh, some of our prior reports, uh, just how uh, that saying, don't fight the feds, is never more true than uh, don't fight the feds, in plural. Um, and, you know, re recently uh, these other banks, uh, Bank of England, uh, ECB, uh, well, Bank of England chimed in that they uh, had no intention to uh, taper anytime soon. Uh, and simply because they don't have the ability to, they don't have the room to. Uh, the whole world is mired in debt. Uh, anytime, uh, the rare, very rare occasions, and I mean this is a, uh, you know, every century's kind of situation where the world gets mired in this much debt, it doesn't end well. Um, and uh, that's where we're on that precipice right now, a fairly major tipping point. But it's uh, different this time, Dr. K. It's gonna, the Fed uh, is magically going to engineer a soft landing and uh, everything is going to be wonderful. Uh, we're going to find a huge cachet of gold underneath uh, uh, Arizona and uh, it'll pay off the $20 trillion debt. So <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like an Alice in Wonderland market. You know, it's like I call it Alice in Louis land. And, uh, I just want to make a quick point. We this morning we sent out some charts because we're looking at this stuff last night, and you look at the you know Bill O'Neill wrote in his books that you have to uh, you have to study the action of the major market indexes every day because that's going to give you a clue as to where the market's headed next. Well, in this market, what the indexes do doesn't tell you crap about what the market's going to do next. In fact, you're probably better off fading what is obvious. And what was obvious yesterday is that you're losing breadth. Breadth is weak. You're getting a lot of distribution in the market. You even see the NASDAQ almost looks like a head and shoulders, right, Dr. K? So, I mean, look at this. You got this. And, and it's textbook, you know, big break, big volume, big break on the right side of the shoulder and the right side of the head. So this is obviously going to break, right? Uh, but but instead, what you get is the the classic Louis. Here's the L, and it turns into a U. So that's that's what a Louis is. An L turns into a U, and then just to give it a little bit of anthropomorphic cuddliness, we call it a Louis. So there we go. You like that? How's that? Anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's it's market is just. Uh... It's creating patterns that that uh, are um, highly indicative of the environment. I mean, you know, these are not patterns that were useful prior to QE. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, it's the nature of QE in 2009. I remember a market direction model was quick to pick up the changing um, uh, nature of the markets, and so it was, it was still able to maintain itself um, even in, in in light of uh, that material change that was brought out into into the markets. Uh, but right now, um, I mean, the, you know, we sent out that report uh, a couple weeks ago about how the uh, the to sum total of QE is at basically all-time highs. So we ar we arguably have more uh, central bank manipulation now than we did uh, when the uh, U.S. Fed was printing money. 
Oh yeah, the numbers show it because you show it. Yeah. What was the latest number? I think a couple of weeks ago, fifteen point one trillion now total over the last eight years, and that was up from fourteen point six trillion just two months ago. So yeah, that's the wild card, and you just have all this money coming in. And like I like to joke, uh, stocks are the new bonds. You know, they're just piling into them as if they're a sort of an alternative currency, right? Right, and and that's the uh, that's the challenge that the market faces is that it's, it's just not a, not at all a, a a market that's traded in this fashion um, and in, you know in terms of uh, the, the VIX volatility model um, you know it, if I hadn't made that change on April 3rd which is a fairly uh, major change um, you know it'd be up very nicely right now but I still again I you know hindsight's 2020 and for the market to trace out this kind of pattern is unprecedented um, and I still stand by that change uh, you know, prior to April 3rd, it was doing well, as you all know, it was up over 50%. And right now, it would be up uh, well over well over 70%, um, just by, you know, mostly sitting on its sell signals. Um, but uh, the uh, the new version has so much more upside that, uh, you know, once the market stops trading like this, and markets don't stay static, they, this kind of pattern is highly irregular, and the only thing that changes in markets is change. <laughs> Or that doesn't change is change. So basically, you know, this type of action has to uh, there has to come an end to it at some point. So you know, this is sort of a patience game. And in the meantime, I mean, there the sell signals can be uh, pro continue to be profitable. You know, new version or old version of the model. They, you know, they, but uh, uh, you have these one day wonders which you've talked about, where the markets get slammed for one day, and then instead of um, ensuing a deeper correction, which they would have in the past they start baby stepping higher. And we saw that in March, we saw that again in May, um, and then now we're seeing it again uh, in June. <laughs> so it, it makes for, you know, as far as uh, the model is concerned, the most challenging type of environment. But I don't like to talk about, about challenging environments because, um, you know, I just want the model to start doing what it should be doing. Um, and that would be, you know, in all these other types of market environments, it can withstand its own. Um, it does especially with the, with the change that I put in, um, it, it, it holds on more than, uh, let's just say I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, so let's see where the, where, the, where the market goes from here. Um, you know, it has serious headwinds. Uh, you've got flagging GDP and jobs data. Uh, doesn't that's matter. How uh, I know, the QE doesn't care. It doesn't matter. It's just you have all this money out there, and it's kind of like 1999 when money was rushing into every dot-com on the planet. Just give it an excuse to buy something like Bitcoin, right. for example, and it'll go flying in there, and that's what's happening. Right, and you get, uh, you know, the, you've, well, you know, you've, the, the headwinds are, are numerous. I mean, I think we're all familiar with, you know, obviously interest rate hikes and the reduction of the Fed's balance sheet. Um, we've got falling commodity prices. So the CRB index looks, if you could pull that one up, the CRB index looks atrocious. Um, it's been in a downtrend, actually, since uh, 2011. And that's a, that's a clear reflection of sagging global demand. It's a reflection of uh, the global economy not being able to, uh, to uh, turn up, to turn higher, uh, despite all this money that's been printed. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a treacherous time. Um, so it, nevertheless, as we know, the facts are the Q, that QE is the most formidable opponent. It continues to, these things continue to print. So, Something's got to give at some point, but we just don't know when that's going to be. Um, Dr. So, you know, I wanted to yeah. interject real quick here. Uh, I don't know, any, any of you who are watching me, just a little bit ago, I was throwing Goose up on my uh, screen because I bought some here, and I just wanted to go over that real quickly. Uh, Canada Goose, I think we talked about this when it was having a voodoo pullback into the 20-day line on uh, Tuesday. So what I noticed is you had a, a bit of a stretch here. You see how you're coming down, and, and just a quick example, you're, you're coming down and then suddenly you get a big bar here. So when I see that and I'm watching the MACD stretching, as soon as I see it start to turn like this, I'll take a long position. So I got into it right in here. And uh, <clears throat> I was doing that just as we were starting the webinar. So now it's, it's turning back to the upside. So that looks pretty good. But I just wanted to point that out. You got a MACD stretch and cross now. And if you look at this on the daily chart, notice how it coincides with, um, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. 
Notice how it coincides with a pullback to the 10-day line. So I got a couple of things going on here. It's coming right to the 10-day line, which is 21.56. It got close. And then you got this MACD stretch. So when I see this big bar down here, and then, and then the MACD turns, this, this fast line turns off the lows, I'll come in after it and test it there. And uh, hopefully it, uh, it works. So, so far it is. Um, anyways, let's see. Go ahead, you yeah, another, continue. Another, another example of, uh, you know, you had a voodoo action um, on uh, Goose at the 20-day, and uh, I, yeah, I believe we pointed that out. So, uh, you know, then, it, then, it, then you're in the money quite, quite well because it was up, what, 5% or something um, on that day, on that update after the voodoo action. And, you know, this is a kind of market where, um, you know, these voodoo setups and undercut and rally uh, work very well. Uh, so oh, you yeah. keep your eye on those kinds of setups. We pointed out um, that despite, the, you know, the market stuck in the trading range because uh, they do seem to be struggling for direction, although maybe now... Uh, QE is going to kind of baby step these markets higher uh, in, in a true QE fashion, as they've done a number of times before. Uh, but keep a close eye out for uh, the, these kinds of setups. Um, SQ is one name that, uh, that well, up until uh, well, today, let's see. Yeah, it's still, it, it was trading quietly over the last few days, and um, it looks like it, it, uh, it's still well, it's at se minus 17% under its normal volume. Um, but that's one that uh, could be ready to go. Uh, light is another um, that's been trading a lot. It's 10-day uh, volumes pretty quiet at minus 23% right now. Um, and uh, the number of uh, Louis setups uh, that we've talked about, uh, uh, because well, if you look at the Nasdaq, as Gil is pointing out, it's forming a Louis pattern of its own. So a lot of these other stocks that have sold off hard, um, they then trade sideways uh, for, for a few days. They form that L pattern. Um, and then you watch for the uh, move to the upside. And uh, AAOI and uh, Netflix are, are two such names uh, that we pointed out, and they're moving higher today after having established uh, their L patterns. And this, uh, you know, Netflix is a, by all means, still a leader um, in its space, a tech leader. It's the like N and Fang, and uh, it wouldn't be surprising to see this uh, recover uh, old highs, um, which are at 166 and change. I think it's going right back to the highs, and if the market keeps going, it's going to 200. And uh, I'm also predicting that somebody's going to buy them. It may be Apple, it may be Facebook, it may be. I mean, I've heard talk about Disney, but if you think about it. Uh, this whole social networking platform thing, they're all evolving very rapidly into media uh, platforms where, you know, Snapchat just decided to deal with Time Warner and Time Warner is going to create shows for Snapchat. And, you know, my my kids, uh, and you know them well, Dr. K, neither one of them watches cable TV. I'm the idiot downstairs in our den watching the stupid cable TV and there's like, you know, 900 channels and absolutely nothing on. What was that, an old Bruce Springsteen song or something like that? But in any case, that seems to be where it's going. So my daughter was even making a Snapchat story movie uh, on, on her trip. She's in China right now. She's been there for the last week and two days, and she's doing it. So the whole, the whole space seems to be shifting, and my guess is Netflix is, well, it's already up there. Netflix is, is uh, a dominant player in the new paradigm. And so, you know, what else do you have going on here? Besides, okay, you've got this prior low. Sorry to interrupt you, Dr. J. I hope that's okay. But you can see that it tried several times to undercut and rally that low. But a lot of times you have to be persistent on this. And then finally, bonk, it clears. And what I was looking for as confirmation was uh, a, a, a strong move through the 50-day moving average. Just carrying above the 20-day exponential as well up here. So that's looking pretty good. But, you know, you have to be a little persistent. But yesterday you dried up. I mean, it's minus, what, 40% or something on that yesterday? What was the volume on that yesterday? Minus 40% or something? It was minus 43. Yeah. So to me, it was like, okay, you finally got this undercut rally. It's back above it. I'll use that as a stop. But, you know, I've been coming in and coming out, coming in, coming out. And then yesterday I came in. And then I really came in heavy today. I'm running about, oh, I don't know, what is it? about a 75% position in the stock right now. I think it can go straight to the highest. And it's a big stock NASDAQ name. Everybody's talking about how the fangs are all tired. 
Netflix is a fang, is it not? Yes. Uh, yes and is. maybe, you know, but Netflix is in a position to just be resurgent and screw everybody back, screw everybody up and just go higher, you know. So what other, uh, oh, here's a, here's a Louie I like, and I'm long this one today. Uh, had a nice pullback into the lows, but notice here, the take two, the low here, uh, seven days ago, that's a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, 72.53, so you tested that low this morning. You've undercut and rallied through it, so now I'm looking for a move. This thing's, what, trading 73.68 right now. I'm looking for a move through the 20-day as, uh, that's at 73.94, so I have an alert there, so if, if you hear a train go off, that's the uh, take two alert going through 73.94. So that's one. And, and the other thing is here's a, a little clue that you can use when you're looking at Louis setups. Uh, take two is very strong fundamentals. Does it not, Dr. K? It does, doesn't it? Take two is strong, yes. Yeah. And they recently had some bad news, a, 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 game, a new video game that my son is eagerly anticipating, uh, Red Dead 2 or something like that, I forget, is coming out... Um, was supposed to come out, I guess, this summer or this fall, and they delayed it till March. So, okay, that's out of the way. But I think that just creates the potential for good news in case they announce that they're going to have it uh, coming, showing up earlier. So that, that, I think, could generate a move back to the highs. And, and I, I think when you think about this, it got pretty extended here, and so it's entitled to this pullback. And it looks pretty ugly. But the Louis formation is, is a critical formation in this market. Let's go back... Just real quickly, look at Tesla. It had it did a Louis formation here. It broke down hard, went sideways, and then boom, there's the L becomes a U. So you know they're all over the place. But you're also going to notice that Activision is something of a a VUI. It's a V that that uh, <laughs> just turns higher, goes up. A V goes up, so you get VU. Maybe a VUP we should call. It. I don't know. But uh, it's basically V's back to the highs, you know. So that's a quasi Louis formation. Uh, and then what's the other? The other big name in the space is EA. And that's that's a Louis in process. But notice that uh, it has well, it has Louis already because you have the L, and that turned into a U. And now you're pulling into the uh, ten day line as volume dries up. That becomes viable. Okay, so. So I think that if the group is strong here, then Take Two is likely going to move higher. So let's see, Netflix is pushing 157 now, uh, but you know what? I I wouldn't be surprised to see that thing back at the highs and nothing flat. It could be up another three, four, five bucks by the end of the day. It wouldn't surprise me. Today we have uh, Russell Index rebalancing, so that they say that's going to make it a little funky. I guess we'll find out. I did want to go over Appian. We talked about this yesterday. Uh, you like this one, right, Dr. K? You like the story? Is it, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, story, Matt. Um, you know, companies can, uh, can can develop apps on its platform um, that are far more efficient. Its platform is far more efficient than the than the old way of um, of doing this. So uh, they're in the right place. They're in the right space. I think that uh, they could go a lot higher, uh, given the fundamentals. Although they're not going to be earning anything for you know out to like 2019. Yeah, like Tesla. Uh, so yeah, that's not a problem, right? <laughs> really good model. Um, I think they. I think they're one of the first guys to to do this, um, to try it this way. So uh, yeah, they could have some legs. Um, and you'll notice what I was looking at is you have this low at seventeen oh five here. It undercut that a couple of times, and then finally yesterday it got, uh, it undercut and it it just held along. And so if I'm not buying it there, I'm going to hang because I'll give it a percent or two below that, you know, and so now today we get a nice move and that's looking pretty good. Um, and may, and it's a pocket pivot right now, but it's a little V-shaped, but hey, in this market, who cares, right? Uh, same thing with Goose uh, had uh, the pocket pivot on the day after we talked about it in the Voodoo report and uh, bingo right here. And so you move, now you're into the 10-day line. Uh, the one thing I like about some of these names is, and you'll get it on Appian, you'll get it on uh, Goose, you'll get it on a bunch of, uh, I, I mean, it's been on Tesla forever, is this, you know, how terrible, the, the, the companies are terribly overvalued, blah, 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 blah. The only good stuff on SeekingAlpha.com is whatever Dr. K and I write, because we don't get in there pitching stocks, we talk about general concepts, and you get these guys who want to tell you, you know, what's overvalued and what you should or shouldn't be buying and blah, 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 blah. And 
I think you just go with the setups. But dude, these guys are like, uh, who do they? There, it's like a Michael Kors, I guess, of jackets or something. They, I was, I was on their website. I might buy a couple of their jackets. They're really nice jackets, uh, and windbreakers and stuff like that. And the very popular brand, premium brand. So that it's not, you know, poor people buying them. It's people who have money. And uh, these days, as the market keeps going up, people like us. Dr. K and I, we, we have uh, plenty of money to buy whatever the hell we want. So, you know, stuff like this doesn't really suffer in any case. Uh, I'm going to, can I answer some questions, Dr. K? Is that, are you okay with that? Let's see. Well, Somebody, you know, VRX, how does VRX look to you for a long? Uh, I, I don't, I think it's a dumb question. How does it look like a long? Why am I going to buy it here on the run up to the 200 day line? You should have bought it down here. So, you know, if you can't figure that out, then, you know, you should be asking us to tell you what to do, okay? So, you know, sorry, that's a little Gilmo tough love there, but, you know, you're right at the 200 day line. So, it's, to me, it's going to have to set up along here and pop through the line if I'm going to be interested in this. But I think the place to get interested was probably down here on the pocket pivot right there. I think that was it. Yeah, you have a little gap that up pocket, pocket pivot. pivot. Yeah. yeah, so you could have gotten long there at 13 bucks. You know, now you're asking us, is it good as a long here? I mean, come on. What kind of a question is that? And, and and the other thing is it's really lame because it seems like you're asking like asking us to bless this as a long and you will base your decision on whether or not we bless it. And let me tell you, don't trust me, okay? Because I make a lot of mistakes. So don't think that we've got some special knowledge. Just apply some very simple common sense and and our methods as well you know because you know that if you got a pocket pivot here that's your buy point you know you had a little pullback in here as a volume drop so that's where you buy it and you should know that and now with the thing extended and you're asking us should you buy it here is it good as a long well it's good as a long if you bought it down here so if you did i congratulate you but if you're looking at buying it now you know it's already up how many percent 20 percent or so 25 percent i don't know yeah. some that's ludicrous true. amount uh, then you're just you're just late. All right, so that's my. Rap. Well, yeah, there's a there's a tendency uh, when it comes to any any form of step, speculation to want to rely on uh, you know the voice of God so to speak, and there is no God. Uh, there is no there's yeah, no I'm, such thing. I'm an idiot I mean, personally. I don't know anything. I just go with the patterns, and if they don't work, I'm gone. If they work, I'm in, and I'm making money. But but you know when something's extended, you're asking us if you should buy it, and it's good as a long here. You know, what do I, do I have any magic knowledge? No. And, and then someone's asking us, is this for real? Are you sure not sell gene? This is a cheap little piece of junk. I don't know. If you want to buy it, go for it. But it's not something I would touch. It trades, uh, what, 66,000 shares a day. It's a $4 stock. So you know what this one does? Some broker calls his clients or there's a bunch of guys who are friends and they're like, oh, you got to buy this cell H, Celsius Holdings. And they're all piling up. I could come in here and run this up four bucks for you if I wanted to. It's a thin little piece of crap. I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But if you think you want to buy it and you think you know something here, go for it. It is in position because you have a breakout and it's pulling in. So, you know, forget about what I think or anybody else. If you know something here and there's the pullback, then I guess you buy it. But it's so thin, I don't even understand how you buy anything. I mean, if you buy... 500 shares or 600 shares, you're 10% of the daily trading volume. Is that right? No, 6,000 shares, you're 10% of the daily trading volume. And that's going to use up, what, $25,000 in capital? Whoa. That's like a 0.0001% position. So I don't know. Where do you guys come up with this stuff? And that, that's the other, you know, the, people like to buy cheaper stocks to get more shares. And, to see, you know, it's an ego move. Um, and yet, you know, the cheaper stuff is, your, the odds are against you. You know, for every cheap stock that works, you're going to get hundreds that don't. So, yeah, you, know, so like, you know, unless you know something here. So you sound like my buddy Mike, the broker. He's always calling me with his $3 biotechs or something. You know, he's like, oh, this one's great. And they've got blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, well, buy it then. Of course, he never calls me back to tell me. Somebody says, Goose, they make great winter clothing. I have some jackets, gloves, hats. That's awesome. The only problem is here in Southern California, we don't need that kind of stuff. But, hey, if we go to places like uh, – because I, I remember the last time, Dr. K, we were in New York at the Traders Expo in, was it February? It was 11 oh, degrees. Man, I brutal. almost died. <laughs> that was really brutal. I have this picture of us outside the New York Stock Exchange, and 
it looks like you did a little better in the cold because the expression on my face, like I just look miserable. And I was pretty miserable. If you recall, I had to run down because we had to wait outside. We were going to be interviewed by Market Watch at the exchange, and they made us wait outside for like 20 minutes. And so all I did is go down into the subway tunnel and warm up down there. But oh, that's so I needed one of those jackets, I guess. But you know, you can't even uh, walk a block. when the weather's that cold. You can't walk a block. You gotta you gotta store hop. You gotta duck inside a store for a little bit of warmth. <laughs> yeah, Build up exactly. Your, uh, your tank. But anyway, so maybe, you know, I should get me some, some goose stuff. Uh, I still struggle with Louis. They look like shorts to me. They do, actually. That's the whole point of a Louis. It's a fake-out pattern. Everything, like, like the, the whole thing with the market today is forget everything you know. That's why I keep telling Dr. K, if you're trying to model the market based on what the market was like more than three years ago, it's not going to work because it's just so screwed up and so random and so different and odd. And, but, right, but of course... Eventually, though, if you're creative and you're you have a power of observation to see what happens and what works, you eventually devise ways of approaching this. And so I've come up with things. We've come up with the undercut and rally, which is just the white coffee in spring, in disguise. Uh, we've come up with the Louis pattern. We come up with bottom fishing pocket pivots and roundabout pocket pivots, and even bottom fishing viable gap. So we've adapted our tools to the environment and that's accomplished by observing what you see in the charts and then observing what happens and so what but we can see what's constructive here is, is because it's typical what the market does so basically you get a break off the peak boom heavy volume looks ugly right and now it's a bear flag but it's an L formation but the thing that you'll notice about this is that it it is uh, <clears throat> it's holding tight along the 20 day and so it looks like it's running into resistance at the 20 day moving average but it really it's holding tight and the selling volume is dissipating so in the old days i would say this is a short and i'm going to nail this thing and it's going to blow to the downside and even you know a couple three months ago ibd came out with a an article on the l formation well the l formation is just a something that's going to turn into a U formation. You can bet your bottom dollar that once some underpaid or low paid newspaper writer has figured out that an L formation, which is just a bear flag, uh, is a bearish formation, then you know it's probably not going to work anymore. So, you know, with all due respect to those guys over there, they're all just a bunch of low paid newspaper writers. And the fact that they still work at IBD tells you that they've never made any big money in the market so like Dr. K and I did and uh, we, we've gone off and done our own thing I retired put that in quotes in 2005 and uh, you got these guys are gonna tell you all about the market when they're still getting paid forty thousand dollars a year to write garbage for a newspaper that nobody reads anymore so you know you got you got to stay on top of these things and I observe these patterns as very playable particularly when you get an undercut and rally in the formation like you do right here. You undercut just barely, and then boom, there they go. Uh, I think you've probably seen that in a few others. I like the quote somebody just put up. You can observe a lot by just watching, and that's exactly true. You just watch and see how things play out. And then you begin to understand or you begin to recognize patterns. And so Dr. K and I, be, we're both musicians. We both play, I play guitar, he plays uh, piano, but we're, we're visual and, and also sensory, you know, our brains work in these sort of sensory visual ways, you know, we see patterns and things like that, either musical or whatever, right, Dr. K? Music of the markets, that's what yeah. the Linda Bradford Rajki, who also plays the piano, uh, uh, that, that's a famous quote from her. Yeah, and, and so, <laughs> and so you, we pick that up, so, you know, not everybody's able to do that, so you guys, you read a book by Bill O'Neill, and you think everything he writes in there is gospel, and, and you're going to blindly follow what you think you see, but to become a really good trader, or at least somebody who identifies when and how things are changing, you have to have powers of observation and, and be able to see, okay, something is different now, and so I have to change my approach, and the patterns are different, so, but, but, you know, it makes sense, with so many algos out there, I think the algos and I believe this now pretty strongly that that there's a lot of smart people out there writing code for algos and they know what what technical analysis is and what everybody looks at the crowd looks at and acts upon and they use that to create algos that trade against that and that's why the algos now will buy Louis patterns they won't buy breakouts and all the idiots who read IBD and are still part of the can slim cult are running into breakouts and a lot of times they don't work so but and then they're running out of stocks when they should be you know taking profits near the highs and then buying back on these pullbacks 
and uh, that Netflix cruising higher. That looks good. Uh, 157.29. I'm showing. So it's take two. So I, I like both of these patterns. Uh, but in any case, you know, that's what you've got going on in this market. And it's just uncanny how it works. So here's one for you. Remember Vive? We took this. I've noticed, Dr. Hey, all of these turkeys are coming back. Vive, you know, looks like it needs to build a new base, but it doesn't. It just forms a Louis pattern, and it goes higher. Uh, how about yeah. this one? How about well, some of these we should put back on the list, I mean, because, like, Netflix is, a, is an obvious one. I thought instance. Netflix has been added as of yesterday based on the thing I sent out. And Appian was yeah. also added, was it not? Uh, we talked about that. So, yeah, no, I, uh, both of those, actually, cause I, because they're mentioned in the uh, the Voodoo report, I would say count them as added. So, sure. Yeah. Um, so here's Wix. Okay, but what do you notice about Wix? Uh, well, let's see. Here's a low in the pattern. It undercut that low. Did it undercut this low? Let's see. What's the low here? I don't think so. That's 6715. No, it, it got 10 cents away from it, but it undercut this low here, and then it turned and rallied, and once it gets about, back above the 50-day line, I think it's back in play. This is amazing just to watch, but that's what they do. They fake you out, and this is a violation. I mean, I've, I've even talked about the 50-day moving average violation fake out because it, it violates the 50-day. It looks like it should go you know, straight to the 200-day line. Instead, it undercuts the low, turns back above it, sets up for a couple of days along that low. And then, because you'll notice here, let's, let's see how well I can draw this. You know, it's, it kind of flits around in here, but eventually it turns and goes. And, so, and that's what you get. And, and so whenever we take something off our uh, focus list, I'm always thinking, you know what, this thing's probably going to undercut a low and turn back to the upside. And guess what? They do. Uh, a question here I'm going to answer. I still, okay, blah, blah, blah. Someone who says, I still struggle with Louis. They look like shorts to me. CC. Uh, but Camors, but it's it could be that, that uh, it just doesn't work. They don't always work. If you get stopped out, you get stopped out, you know. So it's not a 100% pattern. Uh, but, but again, Texas Instruments, I went, to me, that's not really a leading name, but it could be in a Louis formation. It just hasn't really made its way out. But notice how it's not undercutting this low here at 79. So maybe that works. What's another one? QRVO. Uh, that still could be in process. You know, you really haven't gotten the move back up through the 50-day line. The, the, what I look for primarily is a move back up through the 50-day line if they're under the 50-day line, and then a move back up through the... Uh, 20-day line if they're forming under the 20-day line, and that's my, my that's my confirmation. I can get long there, and then I have a very simple stop at the line. So, did we add Snap to the list, or is Snap just a voodoo pick? I know we have some that go on the list, uh, and some say voodoo picks, like uh, uh, QTNA, like Mule, you, like what else? Um, but it, I don't believe it's on the list. Okay, so it's not. It, it's a little bit of a funky setup, but here's my thinking here. These guys are actually local. Uh, you should go. You should go down and visit them together, Dr. K, and, and uh, check it out. But there's a lot of stuff going on there. They've actually started to rent some space down here in the Playa Vista complex, which is known yeah. as uh, also known as uh, Silicon Beach. That's what the real estate agents around here. You know, all the if people are selling their houses in my neighborhood. It's got Silicon Beach special, blah blah blah. So. Where I live is on a bluff overlooking uh, the uh, wetlands and, uh, and where Dr. K lives down in the marina, in Marina del Rey. And at one time where we live uh, up here on the bluff was called Mosquito Terrace. And then, of course, when the real estate agents showed up, they turned it into Pacific Heights. And now, because they're trying to jump onto the whole tech thing, it's now um, Silicon Beach. So, you know, it's though, interesting. Go ahead even though it's not really on the beach. But anyways, where you are could be called Silicon Beach because you're actually on the beach down there. So, Right. Well, you know, on that bike trail, I, I bike uh, regularly. Uh, they used to have that carnival barker that, uh, you know, the, the circus of freaks, you know, and you stand outside with a microphone. And Snapchat basically bought that building. <laughs> so that's yeah. where they're at. But you'll, you'll never see a sign. You know, they, they're very right. uh, low profile. Well, um, but that, yeah. What is that yellow thing, the ghost figure? So it looks like a yellow, yellow ghost. It looks a little. Oh creepy. yeah. It's yeah. And, like well, they also have the, coat the, ghost. Snap, uh, the vending machines too, right on the Venice uh, Venice Beach Strip. Nice. Anyways, so uh, yeah. 
So anyways, Chris, on the, the, the Louis, what you're looking for is a fundamentally sound stock that's a big leader. And usually, you know, Texas Instruments is blah. Now, I understand CC is, uh, you know, one that could have faked you out. But, yeah, it, it sort of was already weak, and it's had, it's had a dis decent run. It's a chemical company, but, you know, and that's just one that doesn't work. But no pattern works 100% of the time. But I usually figure you, you try and put things together because at the same time you're seeing other industrials like Caterpillar uh, breaking down. You know, that's a failed breakout. And so I think you have to focus on names that are leading names with very compelling stories. And I think, you know, you look at some of these, Activision EA, you look at Facebook, um, you know, that was a Louie. And that looks very much like the NASDAQ. Uh, you look at JD was also a Louis. You see that? And and the typical thing is it's just a major leader, okay? So here you go. Boom, back to the top. Uh, and and you know, if you're if you're sitting there and you're a Can Slim cult member and you've just gone paid way too much money to go to an IBD workshop and learn about all these great patterns that don't work anymore, you're going to be locked into a frame of uh, reference that's not really going to work too well for you. So you know, and I don't mean to put down IBD or anything, but they're living in an old world. And the problem is that Bill O'Neill is completely out of the picture. So they don't have the uh, brain power over there, in my view, to move forward with new research at all. Because Lee Freestone, who was probably the last guy there uh, who is really sharp as a trader, is gone. He left in a huff. And I think Mike Webster and Charles are there. But I, I don't know. I always found Mike to be a little bit too... Uh, left brain but they, you know whatever I'm sure he's trying Mike's a good guy but I just don't think they have the team there anymore that they did so I mean if Mike's doing it all by himself that's a tough job but anyways but you know well, how often the advice that's being dispensed is really old school advice it's a it's a dinosaur you know this stuff doesn't work anymore because markets have changed and they keep changing and that that I, I think with the manipulations going on today I mean they're <laughs> They change more than they ever have, you know, in any kind of cycle. Yeah. Uh, so you know, you'll the the creation of you know new observations that work in this environment is essential to being able to survive and thrive. You know, because a number of the names that have been on our focus list and our strategies all this year, despite the challenging year, have been very profitable. Um, so you know, one could be up uh, uh, fairly strongly this year just by you know trading on trading on stocks. Um, you know the uh, and and as far as uh, you know. Markets changing, um, you know. Expect more change. This is this staticness, this dullness to, you know, or the lack of corrections that we're seeing this year. It's not going to continue indefinitely because that's the only thing that's pretty much guaranteed is change. There will be more change. So just always keep a uh, keep a prize of, of it. And um, as far as you know, this, you know, the well, you know, the Can Slim uh, deal. That that is such an old uh, retail product that um, you know hasn't kept pace with uh, with the markets. So. Uh, I think it's just attractive uh, to people because uh, first it has still has a big following. They have a lot of presence and um, great PR, but it doesn't live up to uh, what it's supposed to do. You know, it hasn't at least for for many years now. It's for simpletons who want to be spoon-fed a basic way of, of approaching the market, but it's much more complex than that. But anyways, en enough of that. The snap. Okay, what is the snap situation here? This is how I look at it, and it's still within buying range. You, you're, this is a 1759 low. You're trying to undercut and rally. You're trading 1753 right now, so you're just underneath it by, you know, one tenth of one percent. So in my view, it's still in play. So I actually, I bought this uh, the other day when it was around 1720. It was after hours, and I saw somebody offering like 15,000 shares. It's 1722, and I looked at the pattern. I was thinking to myself, you know what? This looks like such garbage and there's so much short interest because it's now 3.1 days it's up from 1.9 uh, I'm sorry 1.4 something like that uh, you know, on May 15 something like that but it's doubled the sense up 98 percent from the last reported date so though everybody hates this thing and if you look if you go on to seeking alpha they not only hate it they hate it with intense conviction okay and when that happens, a lot of times that's probably the bottom. But if you think about it, you know, this could be a big base uh, that it's just forming and it's rounding it out. And now you're at the lows. So you've got an undercut rally. I think it's in force. Look for the start to close above the 10-day line. And you got one five-day pocket pivot here. Let's see if we get another one maybe by the close. There is going to be a surge in volume at the close. So you're going to see a lot of pocket pivots 
you have to be a little bit judicious about how you uh, interpret them because, okay, there goes take two. Did you guys hear the, uh, did anybody hear that, that train sound? No, it wasn't loud enough. pretty funny. I, I just, literally uh, 10 seconds ago, I put an order in. <laughs> You're so smart. How Push funny it up for that? me, Dr. K. Whip out that, that, those big orders of yours. Get it going. Um, anyways, where were we? Somebody else, oh, did, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I got to tell you. I like somebody with a sense of humor, humor, you know. So, John, you're asking about, you're saying, uh, see if you beat me up more on this one, VVI. That's that's very healthy. You have a good sense of humor. Uh, th now, this is a little better, but it's still so thin. 75,000 shares a day, that looks a little better, maybe probably en route to a pocket pivot. So that's that looks okay. I mean, you could buy it, use a 20-day as your stop, use a 10-day. But I don't know the story here. Is there a good story on this one? VVI. VVI, uh, last quarter earnings up 210%. It's a commercial services advertising firm. Uh, I mean, it's it technically oh. okay, but it keeps trying to break out, and it, it isn't able to. If you look at it on a, a weekly chart here, let me make this bigger. So this is this is better, but it's so 75,000 shares a day. I don't know. I wouldn't play it myself. So I, I like, you know, Netflix is hot. That, I love Netflix. I'm big in Netflix. I'm big in Take-Two. Uh, I like Appian. I like you know N Nutanix. Remember I, that one? This one I was buying last week, uh, and it's along was along the line here. It's moving higher, so finally it's getting going. You got a couple of five-day pocket pivot signatures here, and this is probably just starting. It could be heading back up the other side. I don't have it right now, but I would buy it back on a pullback. Uh, and Trivago is another one, and that one looks like it's setting up. It got a little extended yesterday, so that's in my view something to sell into up here and then it backs in and it's hanging tight so it looks like it wants to go higher uh let's see anyways but i think it's, it's good to have a sense of humor uh john i think that's a positive sign for you as a trader because you, you know you, uh, what i like is if i hammer somebody on something they get all upset there was some guy in the chat room back when you had the chat room and he freaked out one day because i gave him a bad time and uh and just went off but you know that to me that's somebody who's psychologically unstable and probably is not going to be a good trader if they're easily miffed because let me tell you the market will screw with you so much if you're the type of person who is easily thrown or miffed or upset eh, you can expect to be upset a lot so I try to avoid that um, definitely uh, SWKS is a Louis formation and it's trying to come out of there so <clears throat> That's pretty classic. Somebody said sand is silicon. Ah, so yeah, so Silicon Beach is sort of redundant, is it not? Uh, okay. What else we got going on here? Let's look at, uh, now I notice NVIDIA is getting tagged. But I also, uh, I think a few weeks ago I did some uh, work on these stocks, the 3D stocks now. At the time they were forming what looked like Louis. Now here's a situation where you have to be persistent because you do have the Louie, and it's holding tight, and then it looks like it's coming off of here. But the problem is they knock it down again, so you'd be stopped out. But if you stay on top of this, and I've done this with uh, Stratasys, trading that one myself, but you, you'll notice it undercuts this low on this day and then rallies back above it. So what do you have there? An undercut and rally, and you can play that using the low here, uh, which is at, um, what, 1956 as your stop. So, you know, that's playable. So you have to sort of be willing to bob and weave with these things and uh, and just, you also, know, move with the, you, go ahead, Dr. If you pull up JD, um, you know, that you were talking about the Louie and that, but also, uh, you know, keep it, everyone should keep in mind that, uh, that these patterns um, are uh, multi-purposeful. Uh, so if you pull up JD, and you'll see that not only did it finally complete its Louie, but it did um, have an undercut and rally. Uh, right above the uh, prior gap up. BGO low, um, yeah. BGU low, rather. Yeah, BGO low. yeah, yeah. exactly. So there so, it is. And so if you saw that, you could have probably gotten long the thing. But then I thought you could have gotten long it here. So, and I actually tried shorting it uh, on this day, and I made some money. And But I could tell as it's coming down here that there's no volume on it. And so I just took my little profit and ran away. Uh, and then, thank God, because then it just jacked to the upside. But all, all these Chinese names are coming back. I like Momo. Momo looks good here. Uh, 
And you can see it's just sitting on the 50-day line, but you've got a, no, you don't have any 5-day, but to me this looks viable and you can use a 50-day or the 20-day line. Weibo got tagged on some stupid news yesterday, which uh, set up a little undercut and rally here, but it's hanging down, so I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but I wanted to go back to this one, SSYS, and I talked about these as being in potential Louis patterns. And again, same situation here, but, but here's the difference. This was not so... When it undercut this low, it came back above it a couple times and flipped around, but eventually it cleared and it's starting to come up. So these things have big moves, so they're entitled to build bases, so I keep an eye on them. I think they could be coming back, and, and Stratasys has a new 3D printing machine that can be used for uh, aerospace parts, and that would be for jets and fighter jets and military stuff. And so with Trump uh, seeking to save money on the defense front, you know, by being more efficient and bringing more efficiencies to government, this sort of fits in with that theme. So I think Stratasys could have a decent life from here. So another IPO that looks very interesting to me is uh, this Alteryx. Dr. K, did you have the story on this one? Uh, let's see. This was the... Uh... Oh, yeah. They, they've got the, uh, the, the platform um, with... Uh, they, they, what they do is uh, a company will come to them and uh, they'll analyze the data in a way that uh, is quite uh, unique. Um, so apparently it's, um, it's a novel way of approaching uh, this sort of uh, data analytics um, via their platform. Okay. So I, I like the story behind it because, um, you know, any company that is taking existing models and improving on them, you know, developing new plot platforms that are prov provenly more efficient um, and, in other words, results oriented. This, this company right. will, will take the take the existing uh, data and and show the business whatever respective company comes to them um, how to how to greatly improve what they're doing um, through their uh, data analytics software platform. So uh, it's a good space. You know, it's a new space. They're forging the way ahead, and uh, this is like you know, like APPN. They're both they're both of these are companies that are new blood that are in uh, new spaces that have lots of potential and proven out potential as well. Yeah. We've talked about solars in prior uh, prior webinars and here look at this you get a pocket pivot in uh, first solar I believe here uh, three days ago and that just keeps going higher. Was there some news about the t uh, tariffs or something uh, being extended? I forget. But in any case this sent the whole group launching but notice how the thing has to get really ugly before it finally turns around. But as soon as it turns around, you get a pocket pivot. You got to be on it at that point. And then, I, and and the other day, I was actually, and I I think it was on uh, Tuesday. Remember, Dr. K, I te I IM'd you, I messaged you, and I said, watch Fizzler and Spewer. They look like crap. This is where you buy them. They're going to turn. Did I not? Oh yeah, yeah. No, we yeah. were. Um, so so. Uh, Spewer looked like crap, SunPower, and th this was Tuesday, and it's right there, and, and but the volume is light, and I'm thinking this looks like garbage, you know, uh, and, and I, I said, I texted you, you could probably pull it up, and uh, I said, uh, this, is, this is where they're going to turn this thing, and sure enough, it just launches higher, so if you, if you close your eyes and just bought it at the 200-day line after it's looking kind of ugly, you could almost call this a mini Louie, see the the little L that becomes a U, so it's a mini Louis. And the the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the main thing about a mini Louis is that you have the action has to look pretty ugly. So and that was certainly the case. This is all sparked by uh, Trump's talk about the solar wall putting up uh, solar panels on the Mexican border. Oh, is that what it could? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, someone's talk. saying that over here. Uh, that's yeah, that'll why not? I don't know. So that was that's what caused it. I don't know. Maybe it's just a tradable move then. So uh, I noticed take two is uh, moving higher. Whoops. I don't see why this thing can't go right back up to the 80 level, you know. And uh, it's clearing the 200-day line. So that looks good to me. We'll see what the volume ends up like. Uh, let, let me see what the projections look like here. Whoops. That's not going to work. This is my uh, chart view. We get people to ask us, you know, oh, can you recommend a charting platform? And it's like, well, I use them all. So I have this. I have. I even have MarketSmith. We have Wanda, which is the grown-up version of uh, MarketSmith. 
the institutional version. I have Telchart 2000. I have Stock Charts. So I use that. I think I use it, all of the stuff except Metastock is the only one. But I use all of those. Why? Because I can afford it and I'm, I'm a chart junkie. To me, charts are like porn. But that's just me. In any case, um, what am I looking at here? We're looking for, what was I just looking for? Are we en route to uh, a pocket pivot on this one? Hmm. No, it doesn't look like it. Not right now, but I'll bet you get a big spike in volume by the end of the day. So, do you really have Wanda or Panerai, the new Wanda? Wanda is super old school. Wanda is just a platform. I don't, it's not old school. It's not new school. But Panerai, we, we tried Panerai, and I was using it. It's like, okay, what's the difference between this and Wanda? And you know what? It's, it's way overpriced. I'm sorry, but I, I, I'll just use, I can use HDSI because these guys configured it to, to work for me, and I like the stuff I have on it. And I use this. This is new school to me. Wanda is old school. Dr. K has old uh, Wanda. Do you use uh, Panerai? It's, uh, I think it's no, too expensive, I, personally. I no, I, I just, I use what, what, um, what works. You know, you got to, this is the thing, is that people have different styles, and there's lots of platforms out there, so you got to find something through trial and error that, that's going to suit you. you yeah. Um, let's see, some other, uh, not, I notice all the, Fiber optic names are doing well. This one looked fine uh, to me because it's hanging along the lows here very tight. You get a bottom fishing Bible gap, but it's a very typical formation where uh, you kind of get a mini Louia after a Bible gap up. So what happens is it, it, it looks like it's failing, but instead it uh, it comes down and then it forms an L and it turns back up. But it's getting the volume's drying up and it gets tight in here, so that looks good. And of course, this is coinciding with a number of other opticals. Sienna, somebody saying they bought. See, that was perfect. You buy it, and, and you notice how it tests a few times, and so it's gonna, you know, try and piss you off, I guess, by uh, bouncing around, and then it turns higher. But uh, that's also a Louis type of formation. You have a nice, you know, it's usually you get a beautiful, strong move. It's a breakout. All the IB dweebs are buying it, and then it fails. And now we get down to the 20-day, and now we form an L, and the L becomes a U, and it's a Louis. So. Uh, what else? And, you know, what's, in, what's interesting is also, you know, the, the Louis, the, the very nature of the Louis working is uh, in respect to, you know, the, these one-day wonders where you, you have the markets come off huge in one day and then they find their floor immediately right. after. And so the L, the, the bottom of the L is then traced out and then they start baby stepping higher. So then on stocks that are worthwhile, leading stocks, uh, the types of stocks we would add to our focus list, those are the ones that then complete the U pattern as they rush off to uh, new highs once again. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a material change to the way markets normally trade. Uh, you know, I, I have not been able to find an equivalent to what, how the markets have traded this year. Um, and, you know, like we said at the beginning, you know, the, don't expect this pattern to continue indefinitely because markets will always change once again, and that kind of keeps them interesting. Um, but, you know, you can't predict this, you know, so I have a question, how, you know, how could you, how could we have known about this ahead of time? You can't. There's no, you know, future doesn't exist, and you just got to go day to day. Um, and that's why, you know, the, the, the VVM, which is very sensitive to these movements, it's gone through many iterations. It's gone, it's like software that debugs. But in these kinds of markets that materially change from, you know, you have these mini cycles where one new cycle is quite different from the prior, quite different from the prior, um, which is not a normal situation. And if you look back, you'll see cycles where the market is more or less the same, where the rules you're using stay in place. But, uh, you know, like we said, this is, this is not your, uh, you know, your granny's market anymore. Um, it's a lot, lot different and more challenging. But as we've seen, there are patterns that continue to work. Uh, and when they stop working, there will be new patterns that will emerge. And, uh, you know, the, the strategies will change accordingly. And there's no, and there's no other way around it. Because um, also, as you know, we've said, there's a lot of intelligent uh, programmers out there, algos, that uh, keep these markets uh, on their feet. And uh, when their algos run dry, then they're going to probably create new algos to create new profit opportunities. Um, or, or rather, observe new profit opportunities to be made. Um, you know, wherever the, wherever the markets change next. Yeah, I think you just have to be creative and have the power or the ability to observe things, and then and then come to a conclusion about what the pattern has shifted to. I mean, that's how Bill O'Neill, you know, came up with his 
alleged rules, and that was just by going through example after example of winning stocks and trying to identify what the characteristics were. These days, now you just try and identify the characteristics of these new types of patterns. Anyways, let's continue. Let's see. Double AOI, that's, that's Luing. Uh, Grub is an interesting one. That's come out. Uh, I guess there was talk. Uh, Wedbush Morgan came out and said that Amazon will buy them. I don't know where they get that from, but you know, I guess if you're long in stock, that works for me. I notice uh, gold is trying to rally, and you know, my thinking is that bonds have been rallying, and they're pretty sharply. So that seems to be arguing for the fact that the Fed is not going to be raising rates. So all of that is just a myth. You know, it sounds good, and, and Janet Yellen babbles about economic growth, but there really isn't that much. Um, and so it seems like th that may set up something for uh, gold and silver. And, and maybe they're just setting up and basing around and they're going to come out eventually. But the miners, this is my, one of my favorite ones. And here's a Louie for you. You know, it's looking really strong here. Uh, Franco, Nevada, they're like Silver Wheaton, which changed their name, I guess, right? Uh, but Netflix still going higher. Is that a new high for the day? It is indeed. 157.53 pushing through there. Um, but these guys just own streams of production. They don't actually mine the stuff. So that's that's a better, a pure play. So keep an eye on Yelp. I think this is an ugly duckling possibly setting up. Some people have been messing with Twilio, and that's actually working. I think there is uh, talk of Amazon uh, that the deal with the Amazon buying Whole Foods is, I think, positive for Twilio because Amazon uses their app or their service for something. So there's that one. Uh, of course, Nutanix is an ugly duckling that's setting up. Um, what else? Paul Alto Networks, another one. I think I've talked about this one. But notice here, this is a Louie too, okay? Because you get a, bo a bottom fishing viable gap up, clears a 200-day line. So you actually could have gone long that day. It runs up, and it breaks on the uh, tech rec sell-off of June 9th, okay? So now it's looking ugly. But all this is is uh, you, you test the 20-day once, twice, form out the L, and then boom, you're back up above the 200-day moving average, and you're off to the races. So I notice uh, Snap is back above 1760. So 1759 is a prior low. I'm using that. I'm actually in at 1720, so that's my stop, 17 probably. But I don't see it. If it's going to work, I don't see, it's going, see it as going back there. So banks weak after pause stress tests. Yeah, well, I think the whole bank thing, if, it's, if they're rallying on the basis of Dodd-Frank, because there's talk that that's going to unleash $2 trillion of capital from the bank's balance sheets uh, if they remove Dodd-Frank, then they, they could be set to move higher, but they're sort of floundering about. But it seems like Citigroup is one of the, the better names. You can see it broke out on the weekly chart. But, you know, the XLF is... Uh, kind of breaking down so I don't think they're neither here nor there I, I like uh, going to stocks you know so I like the Netflix I like the snap I like the take two I like the Appian the light the Nutanix Finisar is another one that's working uh, Bowzoon is working JD Yelp Palo Alto Networks Twitter anybody notice the pocket pivot bottom fishing pocket pivot in Twitter just when it looks about as ugly as it possibly can it turns around and comes out uh, Trivago, I like Trivago. I mean, even AMD looks pretty good, or did a few days ago. Uh, Weibo is maybe setting up. CRM, Salesforce, maybe setting up in a Louie. Now, you know, that's a Louie in, in, that's in process coming up to the highs. Uh, Data is another great stock that broke out here. And that, this one was a little stronger, though. I think I talked about it last week. It was sitting in this little formation, but notice this was just a big shakeout, and then it just got back into its pattern. So you'll see that happen. The stock will shake out with the market, and but it immediately returns back to its base. I thought that was a strong sign, and that was, I thought, viable in here. I think we talked about it last week. You can go look at the... Uh, Go look at the video if you want. So TTD, some of these mentioned. Yeah, that's another one that uh, the trade desk, another Louie in process. We took this one off mainly because we thought it was probably going to just bounce around. It may still because it had a big. It had, has has had a big move. That's what it looks like on the weekly. And we first put it on the focus list down in here. So. We were early on this one, and, and even I was talking about it along the lows, telling you guys, and you can go back to the April 
uh, mid-April uh, webinar videos and go look where I was saying this is probably forming the lows of the base and you can see on the weekly chart and I think you know you weekly charts still have value you see the tight action the low volume <clears throat> along the lows and it's also kind of a weekly Louie you know so but I wouldn't go so far as to try and use that pattern that way so let's see Dow's up two, Nasdaq's up 23 I mean you can see where the, the strength is um, take two hopping and bopping along, so. Yeah, that should, that should probably go on our list. I mean. Take two. Uh, that's pretty positive. All right, well, you can do that. Go ahead. Uh, how do you monitor sector rotations, and is that a critical part of your analysis? No. See, even, even, uh, they're brainwashed by IBD probably. I don't need to watch sector rotations. All I do is watch the stocks. If I see a group of stocks moving together, then I guess that's a sector rotation. But, I, you know, that that's just kind of just, I don't know, non-specific sort of gobbledygook that people have been sold on that, oh, you got to be identifying sector rotation. Well, sector rotation is as sector rotation does. So, if you see a bunch of names in the same group moving together, that's a good sign. But I don't need to see anything more than the patterns setting up and the turns. If I see a bunch of stocks, you know, like, say, uh, 3D and Stratasys, which would be in the 3D printing group, um, running up and turning off the lows. And, you know, that, there's my sector rotation. That's all I need to see. I don't need something that actually identifies sector rotation because a lot of times it's just nebulous and the stocks in the groups are... Some of them may be moving and some of them may not be moving. So now we're seeing things come in a little bit here, which I think makes sense. And the Dow's turning red. So we'll see what happens here. But you're still still got three hours to go in the trading day. So I don't really pay attention to that, to tell you the truth. And you don't need to track it. You just track the stocks and they'll show you where the sector rotation is. Uh, let's see. Do you use options very often? Why is that relevant? I, I have used them, but only to go long stocks, so other than that. But if I said yes, what does that mean for you? Nothing. And the options are just another vehicle like stocks. You know, you buy uh, the, uh, the option, and, and you're basically buying uh, the underlying. So why does it matter? And the same methods would be used, I suppose, although options are a little trickier because they have other the alphabet soup, the Greek alphabet soup of deltas and thetas and all this other stuff. So... Anyways, shop until you drop. Is it is it in the Louis? Indeed, it is. <laughs> it's a Louis kind of world. What's that movie? It's a mad, 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 mad world or something. We're just gonna call call it uh, redo it redo that as an investment movie called It's a Louis, 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 Louis world or Louis Louis. Anyways. Uh, it's after 10, so we've been here for an hour. So, you know, we've got some ideas for you guys, some things to do. Everything's already moving. <clears throat> uh, we can see how the macro view of the way the index charts looked and the breadth with the stocks above their 150-day moving average being pretty putrid. In this market, though, what that simply means, if you have a whole bunch of stocks under their 150-day moving averages, that just tells you we've got a whole bunch of stocks, a bunch of ugly ducklings ready to pop back above their 150-day moving averages and in the other moving averages as well. So, you know, as I, I think I'm going to come up with a new animated uh, superhero series. It's going to be look up in the sky. Um, no, wait, faster than a faster than a speeding high-frequency trading algo, able to leap moving averages in a single bound. More powerful than a standard issue can slim base breakout. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the ugly duckling. So we, I got to figure that one out. I'm going to have to design a, an action figure ugly duckling as an investment thing. We could sell a ton of those, I bet. Anyways, <laughs> that's all we've got for today. It's a happy Friday. It's an Aloha Friday. So let's see probably martinis this afternoon we'll see if this market keeps going i mean it's a good day so far so let's hope it keeps going and maybe just gather some momentum but you can expect that as we approach the close because it's russell rebalancing you're going to see spikes in volume you might see some shifting around in stocks and some weird action but i would just stay the course with the patterns that are working watch your trailing stops uh, be creative be resourceful be courageous all of those things 
and uh, most of all, have fun. So have a great weekend, everybody. We'll catch you next week. Take care. So long, everyone.